G'day, Paul here. I'm going to talk about software automation for HVAC businesses. And I'm just going to take you through um, a little bit of what we talked about yesterday, even though some of us saw me upside down yesterday. So let me just uh, run through software automation for HVAC. So there's two things which you use to improve the performance. It's your systems or procedures and your software automation. So if you just think about where you might sit on this matrix, like are you well system? or are you low systemized? Do you have a high level of software automation or do you have a low level of software automation? So you sit somewhere on the grid. So say, say you're down in the bottom left-hand corner. So let's just see what that might look like. I'm just going to, have to get my little navigator up here. So say we're down here, right? We're down in the bottom left-hand corner here. So we've got a low level of systems and procedures and we've got a low level of automation. I'm just going to run through what procedures look like and what software automation or sort of the process to software automation looks like. So if you're down here, it's not a fun place to be. There's a lot of manual work. There's a lot of repetition. Mistakes are hard to fix. Get up here. We have a high level of procedures and a high level of systems, but a low level of software automation. Things are a bit slow, but things run predictably. And it's not a terrible place to be, but you could be in a better place. Down here is crazy town where you've got a lot of software and a lot of stuff going but not much procedure in place, not much structure, not much predictability, not a very fun place to be at all. And then you can be up here, which is sort of the smart town. This is sort of where you want to be. This is getting yourself into performance town and growth town. So you have a high level of, or an appropriate level of software automation, appropriate level of systemization, and then really things start to run well. You can have holidays, you can have breaks, you don't have to stress if you go away. There's a lot more predictability in your business and you add a lot of value to your business. And Performance Town's right up here in the corner where you've got KPIs and you're measuring against all these sorts of things and you're looking for continuous improvement. Now, obviously, the goal is to get here from here, from Chaos Town, all the way up to Smart Town and Performance Town. So um, this, is, this is the goal, to get from here up to here. So let's just talk a little, little bit about systems. So what sort of what are some of the systems required in a HVAC business? So you need to acquire your customers. So this is your Marketing. You need to get a good marketing company to help you. You will probably grow a lot from word of mouth. Um, you need to manage your database and you sort of want to nurture the people you've already got. You might want to get um, work from install, get service work, um, and you might need to write some content, get some images, get some case studies, get some referral uh, references. Then sales, you need to close that sale. You might have to go out and do a quote. You might have to do a tender. Um, you need to um, quote a profitable amount. There's no use winning and then losing money, it's not a great outcome. Then your office here, there's a bunch of uh, procedures they need to do. They need to take the call, they need to order stock, um, schedule your job in, manage your assets, um, manage your swims. And then out of the field you've got here, you've got your technicians, they need to complete their work, maybe take some photos for you, grab signatures if you need them to. They may need to raise a PO uh, purchase order out in the field. You may need to complete some safety checklists. Um, or um, manage some asset information, so you have all the asset information you need. And then you have accounts, so then you have your invoicing for long term payments, reconciliation for bank account, integrating to your bank system. Um, and yeah, just uh, all around looking at the performance of your work. Um, you know, as a business owner, you might look at all parts of the system. So then let's just, so I just want to talk a little bit about when we talk about um, systems and procedures up here. So what, what do we mean when we say systems up here or what do I mean? So these are all examples of systems which should be a pages and a, a documented and what would a page look like? So what, what might a procedure look like if you're actually not well, um, you're a bit low on that procedure axis. So a standard operating procedure, really, really simple case study. Um, it just might have uh, an instruction for what it's for. It might have an owner, so who's responsible for this document. You can add other things like the date it go live and um, you know, give it a unique number. Um, but a very simple level that's made up of three things. Um, a purpose, so uh, why does it exist? Why does this document exist? Um, and who should be using it? The steps, so what are the steps you go through down when you execute this pr procedure or these set of tasks? And how do you know you've done it? So what's your completion list when you know it's done? Um, it can be hard to get people to follow these, but if you um, basically write them as you execute them, it's a much better way than trying to sit down and write them all, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. Just say we've done um, a, a workflow mapping session, which um, you can't see right now, but I'll, I'll show you an example of those in the coming days. So you do a workflow mapping session, we map out your workflow, and we end up with a standard operating procedure like this, just a bit of a guideline about how, how does your business flow. 
Um, so, you know, your job might start up tentative, you might need a deposit, so you need to do a little loop up here to do a deposit. You may, may job may be confirmed and ready to start, so you confirm with the customer, you schedule your job, um, you schedule send your SMS out to your customer and your tech if you want to just confirm a job, improves um, just the guys being able to get on site and stuff. Technician goes out and does their job, they complete their job, they might want to let you know that they've arrived on site, so when they get in here, we actually might have another, might have another status up here actually. Um, for arrive, we might say they've arrived in here, and your accounts team might over here review the job or the scheduler. It depends where this happens in your business. The scheduler might review it. Um, could be the same person wearing different hats. So scheduler accounts, invoice, they invoice, then you sync your bookkeeping system. So just really, this is just about what does a standard operating procedure look like. And then say you want to bring that into software. Where do you bring that into software? So in Field Insight, each one of these colored blocks here is a job status. And as, um, as a, a job moves through different statuses, um, different tasks, and different people in your business that change your status. What we do when we automate and we have software automation in place, what we do is we take each one of these job statuses, we describe what happens, and then we put it into the job management software. And over the next couple of weeks, I'm going to go through and I'm going to talk about how we implement different um, processes inside your management software. So anyway, that's it. That's my, um, that's my Facebook Live. And um, yeah, that's a wrap. So thank you very much. Um, I would love to hear from you. If you want help with your businesses or processes, um, please let me know in a comment below and I'll be in touch. Um, if you like this, like it. If you don't like this, just go have a drink or something and just don't leave any comments at all, please. All right, thanks.